Welcome back, pet parents. Today's episode is going to be so fun because a lot of us in the healthy pet space, we think alike. That's true. But sometimes we get to meet and bring on people who are really, really special. And I love bringing you veterinarians who are a little bit more holistically inclined. And I have another veterinarian for you today who's doing some really amazing work uh, in educating pet parents in so many different ways. And I think our messages align really, really well. Uh, So welcome to the Pet Parenting Reset, Dr. Jeff Feynman of Holistic Actions. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Um, I really appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you all for listening. Yeah. Well, so I like, we were just chatting a little bit before I hit record um, how, you know, f- for me, it's it, the foundation of health is food and food therapy. And um, in that same kind of vein, I have this philosophy that nature provides. So, Anytime we're looking for any solution to any problem, I'm like, okay, what can we look to nature to see how this would be resolved in nature? And that doesn't necessarily mean adding something. It could also mean taking something away that doesn't belong. Um, But what can we do? How can we look at nature to provide for us? And that is in so many different ways, not just with food or supplements, but also with Um, how we connect to ourselves, how we connect to our pets, grounding, being in the moment. Um, There's a lot of, you know, spiritual practices that we can bring into that. And I think all of that together kind of also talks a little bit about, you know, your mission and your message and what you do with holistic actions. And I'd I'd like for you to talk a little bit about, about holistic actions, but can you first tell our listeners just a little bit about you and how you found like more holistic modalities in, um, in your practice. Sure. I would be honored to, and I guess I would need to go back to 1975 to do that, but I know we don't have uh, too long, (laughs) so I'll, I'll speed it up. To say I was uh, always uh, an animal lover, I never, never had any desire to do anything other than to be a veterinarian. As a kid, I had um, a very large natural curiosity, so I was doing all kinds of stuff, but I had two passions as a kid, and they stuck for years and years, and that was magic, and learning about magic and science. So I had my science stuff and my magic stuff. I actually still have a magic box, which is all the magic stuff that I took with me over the years. Um, so I did end up as a scientist um, in 78. I was doing molecular biology work on individuality of cells. This was before the days when they knew, you know, what we know now that we'll talk about later. But anyway, took that research, went to vet school, was planning on a career in academia, so started specializing in internal medicine and endocrinology and did my internship in worked in an ER and started a house call practice, all based on conventional medicine and what I learned throughout all those years. And then I began observing my patients. You know, as a house call vet, I got to be in people's homes in the 80s, which was an incredible honor in this area because I got to visit with, you know, people like, well, anyway, with some very nice uh, nice homes and, and notable people. But their animals were getting better from what I was doing. Then they get sick again, getting better, getting sick again. And I began to realize that there was something else that was needed. And one of these days, one of those days, I was doing a house call in Greenwich. And one of my clients with the severe rheumatoid arthritis that had done the same thing. She'd been through all the drugs. She'd been to a number of 
top rheumatologists. Finally, one of them recommended that she start to use over-the-counter weird things called fish oils. And that pretty much resolved most of her rheumatoid arthritis without any drugs. So that started my journey in the 80s into the rabbit hole of natural therapies. Um, I used to, so I started investigating omegas and antioxidants. Um, I was a huge new pet guy. Back in the days when NuPet was an SOD a precursor and, you know, I became a big supplement guy combined with a big nutrition guy and developed uh, the three words for nutrition that I still believe in today. And those are you know, a fresh food diet, varied as much as possible, and in moderation. But by the 90s, even the holistic therapies were not enough to keep those chronic conditions at bay. And I was doing more and more reading. These were the days before Dr. Google, so I was reading the textbooks and discovered that there's a whole other paradigm in medicine that was saving lives that we didn't even learn about in vet school. And that paradigm was the energetic paradigm based on the simple fact that every cell and every living being needs energy to live. Mm -hmm. Very clear cut. No energy life, no energy, no life. So, you know, acupuncture and Ayurveda and homeopathy were all things that were based on that. And P.S. they were also the foundation of thousands of years of medical practice. And when I started bringing that into my practice in the 90s, everything changed. And about a decade ago, I slowed down my private practice so we could start doing more and more online education and um, empowering you all because the paradigm, the energy paradigm is not one that you need to go to vet school for or med school for or have any biology background. It's, it's common sense and it's all, it's a P B to B approach. B to B for me is back to basics. Uh-huh. And it's just what you said. It's all nature inspired actions. Mm-hmm. So it's basically been re- reverse engineering the balance of nature and how it can help animals. And that's where we are today. <laughs> yeah, it's so fascinating to me because the truth that, you know, we, we, we see that our media and our governments, if it is natural, if it, if we can look and see that, like, if we just lived this way, if we could tune in and realize that everything is energy, um, what nature provides to, like, people can't make money on it, so they, like, demonize it and they make it seem taboo and like you're the weirdo if you are into energy (laughs) right like but the reality is that everything is energy and you can't like it only transfers you can't it it doesn't die it 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 moves between things and it it's such a fascinating topic that most people are just even scared to take the time to start to research it because they don't want to be taboo, right? And But it can make such a huge difference. How have you seen it make such a huge difference in our pets' lives? I guess there are two ways of looking at that. There's the pure scientific way in that energy in the body is provided by mitochondria. And what we've learned in science is that Pretty much every disease is mitochondrial energy disease. I've got a genetic brain condition myself. It's a mitochondrial energy disease. You know, pretty much every cell, not pretty much, every cell in the body needs energy to work. And they almost all have mitochondria except for like red blood cells, which don't live very long because they don't have mitochondria. But that's another story. Um, And I totally diverted from the question, so if you could repeat the second part of the um, No, just how, how do you see um, this type of work, this type of 
thinking and paradigm shift help our pets? And thank you for getting me back on track yeah. because the mitochondria are a big part of the fundamental picture, but the bigger picture is spirit. Spirit, love is energy. And lo the unconditional love that we share with our, our animals is perhaps the most powerful healing energy that we can all harness for free. And you're right, because it's free, it's not really patentable. Yeah. So, well, you know, I, I always say just go out and get a, you know, a vitamin V. You know, vitamin V is vitality. You know, vitamin V and vitality is provided by love. Mm. That's really sweet. But yes, can make such a huge difference. I mean, when you said that, it made me think back to like, you know, the psychology studies of infants and, um, you know, if they don't receive love, if they don't receive care, you know, human touch and interaction, like how differently they develop than the infants that do receive that love and care and human touch and interact, like it makes such a huge difference in, in so many ways. In a lot of ways, um, for, for sure, and whether it's a, a you know a end of life person or animal, I mean, how many times have we seen the patients that are nonverbal, you know, uh, uh, responding to the touch and love of of an animal? It's like mm -hmm. starting to talk again. So yeah, yeah, so it's it's very very amazing the power. Of that there is there at, in everybody's home, every pet parent's home. Yes, very, very much so. So and I do want to talk more about holistic actions and what you do there, um, but we were kind of starting to talk a little bit before we recorded about what is currently going on in veterinary medicine. And I know there are certain holistic veterinarians who have really started to try to like get this word out to people like it's bad and it's only getting worse and we have to empower ourselves and we have to take responsibility um, because we are not only losing vets um, faster than we thought so like when the uh, pandemic crisis, a lot of older veterinarians retired prematurely. Um, we also have fewer people in vet school. And then to top all of that off, there are so many corporate takeovers of private practices. So even a lot of veterinarians, very well-meaning veterinarians, they just can't compete with it. Um, they're burnt out, they're overworked, they're underpaid. And, you know, corporate medicine takes over, which is very, as we all know, like checkbox medicine, and this is wrong, give this medicine. And, you know, it's this date, so you need this vaccine, which is insanity, but it is what it is. And it's a, it's a crisis, and it's a crisis that's only getting worse. Um, how, how do you see that? Like, even in the next 10 years, what, what are your thoughts on this? What are, what do you think we're heading towards? What are we going to see? Thank you so much for asking. Nobody's ever asked that question. And I'm going to tell you what I see. From my perspective, I see the trend reversing. I see more and more people becoming veterinarians because we're able to, with the new model that that's being worked on now, we're able to keep it as a heart-based practice. And the reason I think so many vets are burning out is that we almost all go into vet medicine because we love animals, because we're heart-based. Mm -hmm. We come out after four years head-based, information-based, checklist-based, as, as you described. And yeah, the corporate, the corporate um, merry-go-round is making that even worse, and that is kind of the uh, the path that we're on right now. But it's not sustainable. You know, they're currently approving new vet schools by the 
by the dozen. I think like the number of vet schools are probably going to double in the next couple of years because of that shortage. That's awesome. But I, I don't think that's going to fix the problem until we start incorporating energy mitochondria into the vet school curriculum and it's it is starting to happen but it's just you know micro 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 doses right now um but there are a new class of pet professional that can act as a veterinary technician that can act as a holistic pet health coach they kind of go between you know the veterinary standard veterinary work and the reality of what we can really do for our pets because you know what what we learn when we come out of vet school is a fraction of what is available i mean i myself only use what i learn for diagnostic and prognostic information i don't think any therapies that i use right now i learned at vet school Certainly not nutrition, certainly not happiness, certainly not the power of breathing or connection or love or, you know. Anyway, that's a very tall soapbox for me. <laughs> yeah, no, I appreciate that because, and I appreciate at least a semi-positive outlook on it um, in that, you know, more vet schools and, and hoping to get, you know, more vet students into these vet schools and um, I do know, I remember um, Angela Ardolino with CBD Dog Health, um, she she gets to speak at some of these veterinary schools, but she's, a lot of times it is like um, group, like holistic groups of students who are asking her to come in like on their lunch breaks and things like that. But that's still really promising. Um because these students can still see the value, even though it's not in their curriculum, they can take that out into the world, into their practice and continue educating themselves and, and bringing more of a holistic mindset into their practices. So yeah, that, that could be very promising. Yeah, every, every little bit definitely um, is important. There are one or two vet schools that have it in the curriculum of a more holistic paradigm, and even the energy paradigm is in one school I know of. Um, but I don't think it's in the core, core um, mm -hmm. curriculum. I think they're all electives. S mm -hmm. So, you know, my goal would be for it to be part of the core, you know, like, first chair of vet school. I mean, frankly, I'm getting at high school students and pre-vet students before they go to vet school because they need that context. You know, mm. before the brains get, you know, uh, I'm not going to say it, Gabor Mate, uh, an MD said it, you know, they're brainwashed. Right. It's like, it's like we're coming out of vet school or medical school and we're joining a cult because we only can do it the way that we were taught. It's the one right way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the definition of being a holistic doc is keeping an open mind, which, and seeing the bigger, how everything connects. And that's what we're learning in science is that everything is connected. That our hearts and our brains are connected to to you know, a greater universal source of energy, spirit, and so all, it's all coming together, Jessica. I'm very optimistic. There we go. I love that. So for pet parents today, what are some of the things that you would like to see or that you would like to tell them to do to prepare p potentially for not having, even if, if it's a shorter period of time than what we were thinking, like not having as much access to veterinary care or um, what, what kind of things do you hope for pet parents to empower them to, to realize that they really do have a whole lot more control than they think they have? Well, you've said the number one thing right there, and that is to realize that they are the quarterback of their vet care team. 
that it's really all about team building. Your conventional vet can help inform the process, but you've got the final decision. And it's very important to have all the information, not getting into the weeds of physiology or nutrition or supplements, but just know what's available out there. You know, what we, HA Holistic Action, founded on some called HMDM, which stands for Holistic Medical Decision Making. The first step is decide what your goal is. Is your goal to just get rid of that symptom? Is your goal to treat the underlying cause? Or is your goal to you know, preserve life in an emergency? So yeah, uh, that my number one thing is to at least, and that's actually why I'm on with you today, is just to get the word out that there is another way. That there's a whole other paradigm that is the basis of life that we need to pull into veterinary medicine. And then the second thing I'd recommend everyone is learn to use the four awesome A's. And the four awesome A's are four homeopathic medicines, so they're energetic medicines that will treat, prevent, help 80% of the emergencies, you know, whether it's a bug bite or an injury or vomiting or diarrhea or a fever or a cough or so those four A's, Arnica, Aconite, Arsenicum album and Apis. And you can all go out to your health food store and buy them all for 25 bucks or less and probably prevent at least one ER visit a year. I, I hear frequently that if the dog or cat had an emergency, they went to the ER, and on the way to the ER, they gave one of the four Osmes. When they got to the ER, they just sent them home because there was nothing there wrong anymore. I've heard that too um, from various sources that the you know the power of homeopathy and i've i've just dabbled in it cuz i think it does take i mean you can do a lot as a pet parent and learn a lot um but it is very individualized and you, you know <laughs> so i haven't dabbled in it so much to be like a professional at it for sure but um the power of homeopathy really is incredible to me like astonishing like otherworldly almost <laughs> to me it's it's beyond what we um, we call the miracles but it's really not a miracle it's just the healing of the body which we're not even close to knowing what is possible i mean i spent the past 10 years studying human homeopathy and have seen just amazing things with people. Um, and, and the book I was referring to earlier was actually a chapter in a book about homeopathy. And the reason I got into it was when I read the references, the refer a lot of the references back to the epidemics of the 1800s before they had um, antibiotics and homeopathy would save 95% of the people, and there was a mortality rate of 80%. So if you used homeopathy, you lived. If you didn't, you didn't live. And actually, the AMA came into existence, partially at least, to ban the MDs from becoming homeopaths because they were losing all the MDs to the American mm -hmm. Institute of Homeopathy, which was the first homeopath, the first medical uh, 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 group in the, in, the, in the country, the AIH, and they still exist. Wow. And, but they were targeted. Well, oh, my brain just drew a blank. Was it, was it Rockefeller? It was Rockefeller. The, yeah. yeah. And the Flex and the Flex report that they helped to, uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, there was a hospital uh, right down, you know, I went to a University of Pennsylvania, and right down the road was Hahnemann Hospital. Samuel Hahnemann is the founder mm -hmm. of homeopathy. Uh, 
no more than one in the hospital. Mm, what a shame. Yeah. What a shame. And it says dozens, if not hundreds, of homeopathic schools and hospitals in India, in Germany, in Switzerland, uh, but not, not in the U.S. yet. They will be coming back. Yeah, you know, I do, I do kind of feel that. I feel like this shift, and I know, um, again, some people have a hard time. <sighs> Maybe it's that they have a hard time connecting to their own inner voice, and so they have a hard time connecting to the world around them and, and being able to bring in these, these ideas that we've kind of lost over time through, through industrialization and, and, and different, you know, capitalistic movements and things like that. Um, but it, it, where was I going with that? <laughs> oh Lord. Okay. Where was I going with that? Um, oh yeah, there, there does seem to be like an awakening um, in, in lots of different ways. I, I see it with people not necessarily applying it to their pets yet, but I know that it's a road, like it's a, it's a journey. Some people start with themselves, some people start with their pets and it just kind of eventually we all figure out, oh, if it works for me, it works for them. If it works for them, it, it, it can work for me. Um, so I do kind of see a bit of an awakening happening. And I think that um, in, in mass, certainly that can be very powerful to create change. And there's, there's that, that's beautiful. And that's so important because that actually is my, my own personal mission is to help pet parents awaken through their animals by doing less and being more being more with their pets and doing less to manipulate their their lives. Letting a dog be a dog is perhaps the best treatment that we can do for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. letting, and when letting, we letting nature find its natural balance. Mm -hmm. What what we do is imbalance it greater. And I think the voice that you're saying, I think we all have that voice, that inner voice. It's very quiet in some of us. And the loud voices all around us, whether it's Facebook, whether it's media, they're going to keep our friends, our family. That's That may be what's keeping up more of us from awakening. But yeah, I think, you know, when I hear Eckhart Tolle talk about 6,000 people came to hear him in Russia, you know, I think um, that that's all he talks about is awakening through animals, through nature, through our senses, and all mm -hmm. things that are readily available for all of us. Yeah, and when you talk about letting a dog be a dog, when you think about letting a cat be a cat, it for some of us it can be more some of us that maybe live in big cities we're living in a high rise there's not a whole lot you know it's all concrete it can be more difficult but it's still doable we can still manipulate our environment to bring things in to to um allow them some sort of time in nature to let them be i know um rodney habib and dr karen becker kind of illuminated to a huge audience that, you know, the longest lived dogs, the thing they had in common was that they either lived or spent the majority of their lives outside. And that was kind of, you know, everybody was like, oh, it's what they ate. It's what they ate. And I'm sure that had something to do with it. But the one thing, you know, their, their diets were not in common. Their, the fact that they spent so much time outside is what they had in common. And I do think, it, again, like as, as a cat mom, <laughs> like I do have a harder time thinking about just let, like I wouldn't want to just let my cats outside without, you know, a lot of supervision and, and safe um, safety in place. But still, they need, they need nature too. 
they do for sure, but I knew had a very, very important point that nature is does provide the framework and it is you know, a really, really great to let your dog go after therapeutic step walk or your cat to watch birds through the window because I'm a cat parent as well. I've lived with cats my entire life and they, I've never had an outdoor cat because there's a factor that trumps that goes above <laughs> uh, diet and nature, and that is happiness and joy and mm-hmm. love. And we can all provide that to our pets. And we do that through you know, my favorite holistic action, which is the happiness protocol, which basically is finding out what makes your cat or your dog the happiest, doing it doubling it and then evaluating the response to what you're doing and I I've seen the happiness protocol transform more lives whether it's indoor cats or outdoor dogs or myself you know and we know it does this for people as well and this was the basis of um, Marty Seligman's work that became a positive psychology in the 80s at Penn, they were, Marty was, Dr. Seligman was developing um, this theory that maybe psychology is backwards. Mm-hmm. That instead of focusing on depression and anxiety and other you know, disorders or diseases, let's focus on what makes you the happiest and see what happens. And guess what? When you do that, those things all go away. And that, that's pretty much the same thing with dogs and, it tra- and cats. And it translates into physiology as well. So you can watch kidney values, and liver values get better and better and better as dogs get more happy meals, as they get more happy you know, uh, snacks or therapeutic step walks or love therapy. Or my favorite, which is the happy dance. Every, every night on... Zoom for free is laughter yoga. So come join me and a couple hundred people from around the world to sing and dance and play like kids and laugh for half an hour every day. That's awesome. They do say laughter is the best medicine, right? The um, When we think... When we think about spirituality and incorporating that into pet parenting, into the relationship that we have with our pets, I know like it's just the tip of the iceberg, but one of the things that I recommend to pretty much all of my clients is to every day for at least 10 or 15 minutes, put on a YouTube meditation with their pets in the room or their pet in the room. And I'm like, I know this is a really small thing, but there's always so much pushback. Like that's the one thing they want to like dig in on. And they're like, I don't have time for that. I'm like, you need to make time for this. (laughs) And maybe meditation won't be for you and that's okay. You can find meditation and taking a walk in nature or, you know, other things, but like get started and bring yourself in the present, in the moment, and allow your pet to do that as well. Um, and I, I, I really like to see like what happens when they intentionally do that with their pet. Because I know if I am with my cats and I'm meditating, there are certain ones of them that will get right by my legs and like lay right against my legs. And there are certain ones that want to be on my chest or around my head. If I'm doing it with my dog, she is right next to me as well. She's like right by my side and like right ne- pushed up next to me. So like, I know there's value in, in it for them as well. How do you, how do you make sense of that <laughs> for me? You just did a beautiful job because, you know, we share that energy flow with our pets and they are super good judges of our own energy flow, meaning that smooth energy flow, like a smoothly flowing river, is 
how you are when you're operating, you know, in the meditative zone or when you're just thoughtless, <laughs> which is what I was just so sorry about that. No, it's fine. But, um, conversely, when we get anxious, when we get upset, when we get stressed, the heart beds are able to sense that as well. And that, again, is a shared energy that, you know, the meditation is helping to smooth out. But a lot of people are not going to meditate with their, with their animals, if at all. So like Eckhart, I just ask people to please just take a couple of conscious breaths a couple of times a day. And that is enough. And I have... Um, seeing lives transformed just by people liking it so much that they ended up doing three or five or ten and then they said, oh, I had to start meditating. So, yeah. Um, and we have these great, great, beautiful vehicles for doing that and that's just look at your dog, look at your cat's eyes. And you're, you're right in the now with them. Your mind is... is free of all thoughts about the future, worry, anxiety, even if it's for only three seconds a day or three seconds a couple times a day. And that, that's the beginning because the reality is whether we know it or not, it's there. The energy, the spirit is all around us. We are swimming in energy. I mean, the magician whose name was Albert Einstein taught us that mass and energy are interchangeable. That all those oxygens are it's like the the um the joke fish in the fishbowl and one of the fishes swimming by and asks, How's the water guys? And said the other fish said, Water, what water, what's water? Yeah. You know, we don't even know it's there and and it can be harnessed through that spirit. And yes, the more you are able to quiet your mind, the more that you're able to focus on the now, like animals are always doing. They're mm -hmm. always focusing on the now. The more that we can help them bring us into that presence, the better. The it actually the better the world will be. Yeah, actually, that that's so very true. And it actually reminded me of, of something else that came out with I think, I think it came out with the forever dog book that, um, they found people who are like highly stressed at their jobs when they come home. If the very first thing they do is jump in the shower and then interact with their pets, like it makes a drastic difference in, um, their pets behavior as well, because they've kind of washed that off <laughs> of their body. And it's, it's so telling, um, that, you know, there are these, there are these things things that just because we can't see them, we kind of, in our current society, have dismissed them. Um, but they're, just because we can't see them, they're still very, very real and very, very impactful. Um, so they, they do, do deserve our attention and our focus and um, sometimes intentional manipulation, right? When, when maybe it's not going so well, we need to refocus on, on the positive. Oops. Pet your dog, pet your kitty, get them to purr on your chest, and you'll stimulate your vagus nerve and go right from sympathetic to parasympathetic, which is the first step in healing is to get out of the sympathetic fight or flight mode and get into that rest, relax, and restore mode. Mm -hmm. We all have we all have one thing that we do, we all do every day that will bringing us right into that zone. Now, what do we do every day that we can harness to do that? And that is our breath. Mm -hmm. And there, there are ways to breathe that will, that will allow us to come right down. And a great book that I would speak in with that combines science and spirituality is this book by James Nestor. I don't know if you've seen it. Oh, okay. Breath, the okay. new science. Okay, James Nestor, N E S T O R. Yes, and I'll, I'll be happy to share that. But yeah, it's a great. Sure. That's a great book, and there's tons of others like that. 
Yeah. I, I hate to say I didn't, I didn't participate. Um, I was, I didn't make it a priority like I should have. I have been following um, Gary Brecka. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but um, he, I, I did a, uh, his, he, he guides people through like fasts and different things. So I did a three day fast with him and um, his next workshop was a breath workshop and I signed up for it and then I didn't follow through and I'm like, I really wish I had, I had have done that because it's like, once you learn it, you just have to remember to do it. Right. Yeah. And, and it can be so impactful, so impactful. And I think that's what he says. Like we have, it, it sounds silly, but we've forgotten how to like, how many times, how many days do you go and you don't take a full deep breath? Like most of us can't remember the last time we took a full deep breath. And I try to be intentional about that at least once a day to like breathe really deeply for, you know, maybe, maybe do some box breathing or something, but it, it can completely change the entire feeling in your body. And that again, as you were saying, our pets feel that. Um, so especially if they are already in some sort of state of dis dis-ease, um, it can be so impactful for them too. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and that's just some of the education that I know you put out. So with, tell me a little bit more about HA or Holistic Actions and um, what you do there, what kind of content you put out, and how pet parents can participate. Well, thank you so much for asking, Jessica. Um, we just, Start usually with what you are, what the individual's challenges are, what's going on with your pet at this time. So, AG, the, the Center of AG is a forum, a QA forum, where you can go on any day, seven days a week, um, and ask your question, upload your diagnostic data, however much you want to share about your, your animal's challenge. Get my input, get the other vet input, get the community input, and that's the tip of the iceberg. Because then we also do webinars with holistic leaders around the world every week on Monday. There's hundreds of hours of resources that are all available, digital resources that you can access anytime that basically breaks down the body via vitality imbalance. So the model that we're talking about, it's like, how do we look at liver disease? How do we look at IBD? How do we look at allergies? And then the last part is a one-on-one -on -one coaching call. If you so desire, as an HA member, you get a, I think it's a, $30 or 15 minute call with one of the vets or the grief counselor or the trainer or the groomer, whoever you need to try and help empower you because that's really what HA is there for is to help you know, empower you all for helping your pets be the best they can be and have the best lives they can have because they deserve it. And they are naturally inclined to have the best lives that they can have ex until we get in the way. And we may get in the way by a vet care, maybe a um, emotional or mental thing, maybe that we have a fixed mindset about, oh, my 12-year-old cat is an old cat. And he's not going to, yeah, no, that's a middle-aged <laughs> middle cat. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was thinking, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like Gail Poop. I don't know if you know Gail. Uh, Gail is the founder of Bright Haven Sanctuary and a leader in hospice. Which she has something called the Love Sandwich. And the love sandwich is basically, well, she would rescue pets, usually health challenge pets that were like 15, 16, 17 years old. Lead with love. 
then apply homeopathy and other supportive care. And at the end of life, apply love. And those 17 year old dying animals will, would live up to another decade or more. I mean, I think mm -hmm. her oldest challenge animal was in the 30s. Wow. That's amazing. That's just incredible. We, we can all do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, especially once we can shift out of the like convenience mindset that our society has has put us in. Uh, you know, that's a, thank you for saying that because I realize now that is the mindset, but it's actually the fear mindset because because of that fear, we want something fast mm -hmm. and convenient. Mm -hmm. But if that fear isn't there, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, we'd probably still want to get it nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> no, our brains definitely are like, that's too hard. Please stop. <laughs> yeah. 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 Please do it for me. And that, that's, that's, I think, the biggest, uh, the biggest thing that we need to learn is that you know, we have to do it ourselves. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. But that fear mindset is, and that, sadly, I think also, um, it keeps a lot of pet parents in that that loop of constantly going back to the veterinarian for the same thing over and over and over again and feeding the food that the veterinarian sells behind the desk and, you know, getting that postcard in the mail and, and scheduling that appointment. And it, it keeps them in that loop. And I think it keeps our veterinarians in that loop as well, because yeah. that's all they know. And they don't, unless they take the initiative to learn outside of that box it's like this is it and they're scared to break out of it i think yeah no you're absolutely right we come out of vet school with a very 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 small toolkit and what we can learn you know we can go to home depot and and have a toolkit that was pretty expensive and Yeah, no, I think that the veterinarians are very much overwhelmed by what you just said, that they're they're not able to help in mm -hmm. the way they know they can help if mm -hmm. they were able to think outside the box. But there's a lot of pressure to stay in that box and that, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's your box, your mind, your brain is filled with facts when you get out of vet school. And nowadays, you We'll have hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt. So you've got to go to work right away. And who are you going to work for? You know, usually yeah. one of the corporate veterinary practices nowadays. And yeah, they're they're not they're not invested in empowering you all. They want to keep it all. So you have to keep going back to the vet. And the more you go to the vet, the more fear you're gonna get. And yeah, it's yeah, there was a wonderful, uh, wonderful holistic veterinarian who passed away last year. Unfortunately, um, she, she used to be a, a horn equine vet, and then she became a small animal vet. The equine people, she said, were really good at supporting each other and not going to the vet that often, so they were much more holistically oriented. She found that the small animal people would go to the vet for everything mm -hmm. my dog has got an itch or a bad ear or you know uh, some diarrhea so we got to go to the vet and before we go i don't know how long you want to record yeah. we can go as long as you want but before we go i do want to talk a little bit about because there's archie and his Beam paradigm behind me. I just want to. I have to show you. Archie is right here. Oh, it's yeah. my rescue dog. Oh, oh how sweet. Yeah. Okay, yes, I see him at the top. He, of... Yeah, there he is. But he is right now with us in spirit only because his physical body actually gave up um, in January, but not before. Mm. Passing on this information about 
beam and the happiness protocol and breathing and all the stuff that helped him tremendously because he was we were his fifth home and he had um, a really really hard life before he came to us but um back to beam beam as in the balance beam where the sun beam it's an acronym behavior energy appetite and mood those are the four things that will help inform you whether any individual symptom is really a symptom that you need to be immediately rushing off to the vet of the ER for. Mm-hmm. So I'll just give you a quick example from from um, H A from the past couple of days, and that is you know a red ear or ear infection. Or um, another pet that had diarrhea or vomiting. But their beams were all normal. So what that meant is that their energy flow was really not that disturbed by this individual symptom, which was the body's way. A symptom is the body's way of telling you that something's off inside. And you can correct those individual symptoms very, very quickly and easily, often with the the actions that we just spoke about as far as going outside or snuffling or happy meals or happy dance. So, yeah, maybe focus on beam and quality of life and not individual symptoms. Mm -hmm. We'll have to do a whole other podcasts at some point about the symptom paradigm and how symptoms are an expression of spirit. Mm. How symptoms are the body's way and nature's way of letting you know that you need to deal with the underlying energy imbalance. Yeah. And that's where homeopathy and all the other actions that we talked about come in. Awesome. Yes, I I do remember um, getting that first email, I think, when you sent the beam. And I was like, that is so on point. Like, yes. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, it, it is it is a different way than what most people are used to. Um, pet parenting, but it's, again, I've said this word so many times, it's so empowering when you take that position and say, okay, let me assess everything that's going on with my pet. Maybe I don't need to run to the emergency vet at, you know, 11 o'clock on a Sunday morning because just because my dog has diarrhea right now, (laughs) like there there's, which happens far too often, I'm sure. But, um, it, it is really, really empowering to, to be able to assess, to be connected to your pet in a way that you can feel like how their mood is, how their energy is. They're still doing great. They're still eating. They're still drinking. They're still going to the bathroom as normal. Then, okay, maybe let's call our vet on Monday morning and, and get some advice instead of freaking out and running to the emergency vet. Like that's, it's very empowering to be able to 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 do that and to have that kind of awareness of yourself and your pets. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. And thank you for for appreciating it because it really not only does it help you evaluate, but it allows you to detect diseases early. So an early detection of disease means that you can intervene more quickly because that dog with diarrhea on the weekend with holistic actions by the time they go to the vet on Monday or Tuesday may not even have to go to the vet. Yeah, absolutely. So where can people find you? How can they join holistic actions? Where is all of that located? Holistic Actions with Ness.com on the web, Instagram. We have a free um, private Facebook group. So anyone that wants, you know, 
wants to join there. Um, anyone can Google any question at in Holistic Actions Forum, and you'll be directed to a post on the forum that have already um, discussed that. So, you know, only members can post their questions, but everyone is available to search the forum. Oh, that's interesting and really, really good to know. Okay, holisticactions.com, and then um, it's also Holistic Actions on Facebook and Instagram. It is. It is. Perfect. You, YouTube, actually. I think we have a lot of stuff on you know, a couple hundred YouTube videos. That's awesome. Yes. Please go subscribe there as well. So yes, thank you so much for being here. I would love to have you back and we can talk more about symptoms and um, energetic imbalances and, and all of that wonderful stuff. Now that um, now that my audience is a little bit more familiar with you, we could probably go into more detail and not freak them out. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, but well, uh, let, me, let, me, let me know how that goes because that, that's one of my main intentions. Try not to freak people out too much. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I... It, it just is what it is anymore. If I freak you out, I'm sorry. It just is what it is. <laughs> hell. I mean, you're so, so sweet and well-balanced that I can't believe they used to freak anyone out, but thank you. Thank oh, for sure. Oh, and the internet is, is a beautiful and nasty place. <laughs> mm. Yeah, but anyway, thank you so very much for being here. Guys, check out holisticactions.com. Find um, Dr. Jeff on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And I highly recommend checking out the forum, um, joining the, the the group, the Holistic Actions group, and finding out more. Even if you're just searching at first, that's okay. Learn a little bit and then um, dive dive in. So thank you again, Dr. Jeff, for being here. And everybody, y'all have a wonderful rest of your week ahead. Thanks so much, Jess.